Greetings, health scholars, and welcome back to the For Health Scholars channel. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Arubasa, and on this channel, I show current and aspiring healthcare professionals how to, one, quickly and successfully earn their degrees, and two, how to start, build, and enjoy profitable careers within the business side of the healthcare industry. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Definitely turn on your post notifications. I promise you don't want to miss out. Now, today's conversation is all about this question that I received. And a subscriber asked me if I had to do it all over again, would I choose a career in healthcare administration? And when I heard the question, I was like, oh, that's a deep question. And I'm probably going to get a little personal with you tonight. But uh, I think this is a great spinoff to a former video that I did called Becoming a Healthcare Administrator. And in that video, I shared my story and my journey of becoming a healthcare administrator. And so many people love the video. It was well received. And so I think this is a great part two to that video. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Now, if I had to do it all over again, would I choose a healthcare administration career? And I think if I had to answer that question today, which is the million dollar question, my answer would be, drum roll, da, 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 da. absolutely, absolutely. If I had to do it all over again, I would definitely choose a career in the field of healthcare administration. And if you watch my video talking about my journey and becoming a healthcare administrator, you know that I did not get in this field by something that I was like, oh, this is going to be my life mission. Oh, this is something. I wanted to do from young. I got into the field of healthcare administration because I was running from being in a nursing degree. <laughs> and um, uh, in that video, I definitely encourage you to watch it if you haven't watched it. I just talked transparently about how did I even wind up in nursing. I went to high school as a performing arts major, particularly a dance major. How did I end up in nursing? So uh, definitely check out that video. But my segue into the, the healthcare administration field was definitely unique, but it was something that I love. And that's why I stayed there. However, I wanted to make today's conversation something that also can empower and encourage you all. And I want to talk about the things that I would have done differently if I had to start today in doing a career in healthcare administration with the hopes that if I share it with you, that it will help you as a person who's transitioning into healthcare administration or management or definitely new to the field of healthcare administration that I hope that my things that I would do differently will help you make better decisions about your career path in this field. So the first thing that I would do differently, and I classify these things by academically, professionally, and personally. So the first thing that I would do differently academically is that I would have completed all of my degrees at a HBCU. And if you're not sure what a HBCU is, it is a historically black college or university. Now, when I started my undergraduate degree, I started at a HBCU. I went to Norfolk State University and I finished all of my degrees at PWIs, which are predominantly white institutions. And I'm here to tell you my experiences were completely different. And I truly love the experience that I had at a HBCU. It was always amazing to me to see my professors who be in the field that I was learning about and that I could relate to. And this is no offense to individuals who are not Black or African American. I am a person who worked with all types of people from all walks of life, and I'm a very much inclusive person. But my personal experience with gaining my degrees, I felt like I would have been better supported at an HBCU than I was at a PWI. Now, I did overcome and got all my degrees, but I just think that my both on campus and in class learning experiences versus off campus learning experiences would have been completely different if I would have went to an HBCU. Now, here's another thing that I would have done differently from an academic perspective. I would have done a dual master's and doctorate program. Now, here's why. I felt like I would have probably gotten my doctorate degree a little faster if I did a dual program, although I don't know of any dual MHAs, PhD programs, or MHA, DHA programs. I don't know of any. I haven't seen it. But I do know there were several dual public health programs. And so when I first started looking at doctorate programs, they had MPH 
and DRP degrees that were dual or MPH and PhDs. And at the time I wasn't into public health. I was like, oh, I am, you know, working in the field and want to be in administration because I started working in healthcare from when I was even getting my bachelor's degree. But that was my focus. I wanted to be in the management side. I didn't have any other interests. I didn't see myself anywhere else, which it kind of panned out for me because now I'm able to build a community for like-minded professionals to learn from. I got into public health in the midst of my academic teaching career. So one of my deans is like, I need you to teach public health courses. I know you can do it. Go and learn it. And that's what I did. And that's how I got into the field of public health and recognized that they all work hand in hand. They all formulate the business side of the healthcare industry in their own way. And I loved it. So thinking back now, if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have done a dual DRP PhD degree, or if they have a dual DHA and MHA program, that would have been uh, also amazing. But I don't think they have those these days. The next thing I would have done different academically, I would have completed my doctorate degree using a university that offered a hybrid delivery format. Now, when I got my doctorate degree, I got it from an institution that was completely online. And I will not say that my online experience did not have its benefits. Like one of the benefits of going to school online is that I had a better management of my time. And at the time when I was doing my doctorate, I was working two jobs. So I was working as a program manager and I was also teaching part-time as an adjunct professor. So where in that would I have find time to go to class? I'm not sure. So the online format gave me the option to be able to travel, to, you know, work how I wanted to work and still get schoolwork done. But reflecting, I definitely think I would have probably better benefited from a hybrid delivery format where some days we were on campus, other days we were off campus. But the simple fact that there were some challenges along the way when I was getting my doctorate that it would have been just very instrumental if I could have spoke to someone in person and not have to wait from email and um, days go by before you get a response. You could just definitely speak to someone on campus that could have helped me. So to be transparent with you, one of the challenges that I had in my doctoral program was learning the, the statistical software that we use to help us manage the data that we collected from our study. And for me, I had the hardest time trying to set that up, couldn't figure it out. And it's that delay because I was unable to speak to someone in person. It really got me frustrated because I'm like, I'm trying to figure this out. I need to talk to somebody. It's 12 o'clock at night where I'm trying to figure out how to use this software to my advantage. And I don't really have anyone to talk to. So I think I would have better benefit from that that was one challenge. Another challenge is being able to meet with my mentor one-on-one and face-to-face. There's something amazing that happens when you get to meet people in person. But I'm not going to say that I didn't appreciate the flexibility that came with doing a program online, including my doctorate degree. But look, Looking back, I probably would have did a hybrid delivery format. So I hope that helps somebody. And I want to encourage you that really be honest with yourself when it comes to your academic journey and the things that you can and cannot do. If you are a person who prefers to learn on an on-site class being on campus, don't think that you can do an online program and think that it will be easy for you because you will have a learning curve if you're not a person who would appreciate or enjoy doing work online. Can you get through it? Absolutely. But you want to learn in environments that are comfortable to you because that helps you focus on the task. And the task is consuming this knowledge to get your work done. And so if you are struggling, and I, and I see this a lot when I because I teach online as well, when I see students who they're not uh, students who appreciate learning online and they have to learn online because of whatever reasons, it is very hard for them to get adjusted in the program. They get lost. There's a lot of things that happen. So be honest with yourself. If you like, I prefer to learn on campus in a classroom, do that. If you can do online work, do it. I'm here to tell you, just because you're taking school online doesn't mean that it's easier. Actually, there was times I was like, Dad, I should have did school on campus because today the school is closed. Memorial Day is happening. The school is closed. But on the online program, it's open until the semester is done. So you had no excuse not to get the work done, even though it 
was a holiday. And so these are all of the things that you should take in consideration when you're making a decision on what academic path you want to embark on. Now, here's the next thing that I would have done differently from a professional perspective. I probably would have explored the insurance side of the healthcare industry as a healthcare worker. So I probably would have wanted to work for an insurance company. I have dealt with insurance companies, but from the side of working for an organization, working with them trying to get paid. But I would have loved to know what it's like working as a person who works for a company like Aetna or Blue Cross Blue Shield. Those are just some of the insurance companies here in the U.S., I would have loved to know. Now, it's not to say I can't do it, all right? It's not to say that I can't go back in the field. But um, if I had to do it all over again, I would have loved to gain that experience at my prime. (laughs) Um, The next thing I would have done differently professionally, I would have attended more industry-related conferences. So in my professional career, I went to two conferences related to my industry. And can I tell you the wealth of knowledge that I learned going to these conferences really gave me an added advantage compared to those who didn't attend the conference. Like, I'll give you an example. Today and over the last couple of months, you've been seeing so much information about AI, artificial intelligence. But I remember going to a conference roughly about, I think it was in 2014. They were talking about AI technology in healthcare. Here we are in 2023 talking about AI like it's a hot topic, but it's not true. For years, it's been around. And I'm just, it just shocked me. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I knew about AI for a long time that now it's becoming a hot topic. So I definitely would have attended more conferences because they offer a wealth of knowledge. Also, of course, the networking component, meeting people who are in the field, who are working in positions that are similar to you, what it's like at their industries. You know, sometimes they're your competitors. You want to know what they're doing (laughs) so you can have a heads up. Um, But other times it's just to connect with people who later down the line, you may meet again as your paths cross. It can be assistive to each other to helping you secure employment, helping you get your research done. I mean, the list goes on and on. So I would have attended more industry-related conferences. The next thing I would have done, and this is from a personal perspective, I would have sought out external mentorship, especially for my doctorate program. And it was towards the end of my doctorate program that I was able to just start speaking with people who can help me navigate all of the different things that happens as you become a doctoral student and as you go to become a doctoral candidate and then become a doctor. There's a lot of things that, um, especially in the field of healthcare administration, where I don't know anybody who prior to starting my doctorate degree, who had a degree in DHA. It was only the professors at the time that I knew, and some did not have a DHA. And so I would have loved to have someone who externally from my university be able to guide me and mentor me in this process. I think it would have given me more clarity a little quicker than when I received it. Now, I'm so thankful to God that I was able to get on the other side and get my degree conferred and now hold the title of being a doctor. But but one of the things that I promised myself and I said that I must do is that when I graduate, I really wanted to pay it forward and show others who are interested in getting a doctorate degree, particularly in the professional doctorate side or PhD, because I, as a professor, I have mentored and consulted and taught classes at the doctoral level. I wanted to pay for and share with you all that I know and help you not make the mistakes that I've made so that your process can be streamlined and that your process doesn't have to be all about trying to figure it all out on your own because you want to get in there, you want to get the work done, you want to write your paper, and then you want to be out. <laughs> it is costly to get your doctorate degree. And And I I really felt like if I had a mentor, they would have really helped me make better decisions as it relates to being a doctoral student, a doctoral candidate, and now being a doctor. So those are just a few things that I wanted to share with you that I would have done differently. I hope this information was helpful to you. Definitely let me know in the comment section if you have questions. And until the next time, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye for now.